I'm Micah Smith, and in today's quick tip, we're going to look at advanced string manipulation, specifically looking at substrings. So let's imagine that we have a situation where our bot just recorded this line of text. Maybe it grabbed it from a website or we got that using um, some extraction tool. But we have a line that says, please pay $24.99 to ABC Power, P.O. Box 572, Dayton, Ohio, 45459. Now, if I wanted to extract some of the text from this, there's a couple different options and, and approaches I could use to get that. I'm gonna go over to the actions and specifically in the string actions, I'm gonna look at two different commands that we can use to extract text from this. So for the first example, let's say that we wanna read the dollar amount due from this string of text. The easiest way to do that is the extract text command. If I drag that over here, I'll set my source string, and in this case, my source string that we just used right here was to prompt assignment. So I'm gonna set that to prompt assignment for my source string by hitting F2 and selecting that from a dropdown. I then have the ability to choose either before, before and or after, or after for my context for extracting that data. I'm gonna select before and after, and I'll show you why here in just a second. If we go back to our string here, the text that comes before our amount due is this please pay. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that right here in the field that says start after text. And what that means is we're gonna look directly after this particular piece of text, the please pay, and we're gonna start extracting right after that. Now on the back end, I can also say an and to say, hey, when to stop extracting. And so if we go back to our string here, I'm gonna say two, I don't need a whole lot of context, I just need the word to here. And I'll put that in, in my end before text. And so what should come out of that is just the $24.99. What I'll do down here at the bottom is set up a variable. I'll call this one S amount due. We'll hit save. And then I'll change my message box to the amount due. So let's just put amount due here and we'll put in our variable. Bonus tip here, when you fill stuff into a message box, it can be a combination of variables and literal characters. So it can give your message boxes a little more context when you're running them. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And again, it should just pull out the $24.99 that we had from our original string. Uh, and this is really useful when you're dealing with extractions, especially from web pages, right? If I need to extract someone's name off of this text, but it has their name plus their title, this is a good way to get just that data. The other example I wanna look at here is what if we wanted just the zip code, right? Well, we could use the before and after text, but if there's lots of different kinds of addresses and we don't always know what the state's gonna be, that probably won't work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable, I'll just delete this line because we don't need this anymore. And in this case, we would use something like find. So I'm gonna move a find command over here and with find, I set up a source string. So again, we'll use prompt assignment. And I set up a find string. Now, I could hard key a find string if I knew the data that I'm looking for. But in this case, let's imagine that I don't, right? I don't know what that zip code is. So what we'll do is we'll say, we're gonna find string using a regular expression. Now, because I wanna find the zip code, I'm gonna put slash D and then five. So if I'm looking for a five digit number, okay? If I wanted to you know, be able to accept zip codes that had the dash and then the couple other numbers after it, you could do that too with a slightly different regular expression. Now it's gonna to return to me a position within the original string where it found a match if it finds one. So I'm gonna put uh, let's in zip position. We'll hit create and select. Great. Now, assuming that returns something to me, I want to extract w the data where I found that particular match. So if I go here to substring, I'm going to drag that over. Now, again, it's going to ask me for my source string and my source string stays the same. It's still prompt assignment. And my start from is where I want to fill in the number that we just got as a result of our find. So we'll put F2 here and we'll fill in in zip position. Right, So if our zip code is in position number, let's say 35 of our string, then we are going to start at 35 and extract X number of characters. Now for our example, the zip code is the very last thing in our string, so I don't need to set a length. 
but if I was concerned about how long that particular data should be, I could fill in a link there. Now for my outcome of that, it's going to be a string, so I'm going to put s zip code and hit create and select. I'll hit save here. The one last thing I want to do is switch this since we don't have a mount do anymore. I'm going to put zip code and I will again reference the variable for our zip code right here. Hit save and run. You can be really creative with the way that you handle strings and extracting data and sometimes you have to be based on the data that you have. It's important to pay close attention though to the context of that data and how to find it within uh, a parent string. This has been Automation Anywhere Quick Tips. Hopefully you found this helpful. Remember to like and subscribe and follow us on our social channels.